In this video, we're going to get some exposure to the washer method for volumes of revolution. What we'll be doing is determining the volume of the solid created by rotating the area bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 2x about three different axes. One will be the x-axis, one will be the y-axis, and one will be the line y equals negative 3. So first and foremost, what I'd like to do is sketch the region in question before we start rotating it about certain axes. y equals x squared is the standard parabola opening in the upward direction, vertex at the origin, and y equals 2x is a line of slope 2 passing through the origin. So the region in question is going to be this little sliver that is contained in between the parabola and the line. Now when rotating this for part A about the x-axis, first thing we'll need is the volume formula. If I were to draw in a sample rectangle within the region, I notice that the sample rectangle does not actually touch the axis of rotation. As such, when we rotate this, it is going to create a washer rather than a, uh, a disk here. <clears throat> Now the volume formula that we have is the definite integral from a to b of pi times the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared uh, times whatever the thickness happens to be. No, sorry, the, uh, the height. Thickness is for cylindrical shells. So the height of the washer that we'll be creating is going to be this little tiny change in x right here. So height can be expressed as dx. The outer radius and the inner radius are referring to the distance from the axis of rotation to the top of the rectangle, that's capital R, and then to the bottom of the rectangle would be little r. Now the outer radius, the top of the rectangle, is defined by the line, and the line is going to be y is equal to 2x. <clears throat> As such, big radius here is going to be 2x. The little radius is created by the distance from the x-axis up to the um, parabola, and as such, that's simply going to be x squared. <clears throat> as far as the bounds are concerned, the bounds will be the same for all three of these examples, well, actually for two of these examples, we'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, we can get these by setting the two functions equal to one another. So x squared is equal to 2x, so x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. And factoring out a greatest common factor gives us x times x minus 2 is equal to 0, telling us that the bounds are going to be x equals 0 and x equals 2. <clears throat> Plugging that into our volume formula over here, we'll have the definite integral from 0 to 2 of pi times. Outer radius was 2x. We'll be squaring that as part of the formula. And the inner radius was x squared, and we'll be squaring that as part of the formula as well h was dx. Now, as we did in our other examples, first thing that we can do here is pull the pi outside of the integral and simplify the rest of what's inside the integral. That'll be 4x squared minus x to the fourth dx. <coughs> Excuse me. In this form, we are ready to integrate. Uh, 4x squared will become 4 thirds x cubed, and x to the fourth will become 1 fifth x to the fifth. This is again going from lower bound 0 to upper bound 2. Plugging in these bounds will give us pi times 4 thirds times 2 cubed minus 1 fifth times 2 to the fifth. And if at this point you'd like to turn to a calculator to help you out, I can safely say nobody blames you. I believe the result is going to be 64 pi over 15 <clears throat> but you know what? A little verification is probably not too bad an idea here. So 4 over 3 times 2 cubed minus 1 over 5 times 2 to the fifth power. We'll leave off the pi for the time being. Math enter enter verifies for us that 64 fifteenths is indeed the coefficient. That's good to see. Now for part B of this problem, we're going to be setting up something very similar, and we'll set up the visual right over here. <clears throat> Parabola, straight line. However, this time, because we're rotating about the y-axis, 
it'll be necessary for us to set up our sample rectangles as though they are long in the horizontal direction and short in the vertical direction. So this time the corresponding height will look like this. Additionally, we're also going to have a large radius, like so, and once again, an inner radius, like so. Now, because we're rotating about the y-axis, that indicates that our h-value is going to be a little tiny change in y this time, letting us know that we will need to set up this integral in terms of y. Now, with that in mind, first thing we'll do is go ahead and solve these things for x so that we'll have x in terms of y. Normally if y is equal to x squared we would see x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y, but you'll notice that the region is only defined on the right half of the parabola. Right half would be the positive half. Additionally we also had y is equal to 2x, and in terms of x that'll be x is equal to 1 half y. You'll notice in this example that the large radius is defined in terms of the parabola this time. So the large radius is going to be the square root of y. The inner radius, you'll notice, is the distance from the axis of rotation to the straight line. The straight line is defined as 1 half y. Additionally, in our previous example, we got that the points of intersection were at uh, 0 and 2 in terms of x. You can show without too much difficulty that based on the definitions of the functions that the actual ordered pairs are 0, 0, and 2, 4. We can get that 4 by either multiplying by 2 or squaring the 2. Cool. So the bounds in this case will go from y equals 0 to y equals 4. So same volume equation as before. Definite integral from a to b of pi times outer radius squared minus inner radius squared times the height. Plugging in what we know. We just said that the bounds are going to go from y equals 0 to y equals 4. And we'll have a pi times big radius is the square root of y, which we'll square. Smaller radius is 1 half y, which we will square as well, and h will be dy. Once again, it'll be necessary to simplify the things inside the integrand. We'll pull the pi outside of the integral and simplify. Square root of y quantity squared will be y, and then we'll see 1 quarter y squared dy. In this form, we're ready to integrate. y will become 1 half y squared, and 1 quarter y squared will become 1 twelfth y cubed. This will go from lower bound 0 to upper bound 4. Oh yeah, that's probably something that should be pointed out. On the previous problem, I never plugged in the lower bound, because when you do plug in x equals 0, everything just zeroes out. We're going to see the same thing happen here. When we plug in the lower bound of y equals 0, everything will just zero out. So once again, half of 4 squared minus 1 twelfth of 4 cubed. And final answer for this one, if we factor out a 4 squared, that's 1 half minus a third, which is 1 sixth, so 16 sixths. I will call that 8 pi over 3. And again, if you want to use the calculator to compare, you're welcome to do so. Now you'll notice that the answer is different than what we got in the first method. Reason being, we're rotating them about completely different axes. Therefore, I would not expect the volume to be the same because we're going about different axes. Now, if we had gone about the same axes and just used a different technique, I would expect to see the same sort of thing going on here. <clears throat> this, of course, leads us to part C of the problem, where we're going to take the same region in question, but this time rotate about the line y equals negative 3. The setup is going to look a little bit different for this one. I am, however, going to start the same way as before. Parabola, line, and axis of rotation. Axis of rotation this time is all the way down here at y equals negative 3. Now if I were to once again draw in a sample rectangle, because this one is going to be a horizontal axis, we're going to see a little tiny change in x, representative of the height of this washer. 
The big radius and the small radius are going to change a lot though. Here we have our y equals 2x, here we have our y equals x squared, and here we have y equals negative 3. I'm actually going to label them. The top function, which is the line, I'm going to label as y1. The bottom function I'm going to label as y2, that's our parabola, and then down here we'll have y3. It's a lot easier to explain these radii when you have it in terms of these different y's that are available. So here we would see our outer radius. Here we see our inner radius. And we'll talk about how to create those. Volume is the same formula as what we saw before. Definite integral from a to b of pi times big radius squared minus little radius squared times the height. The height is once again going to be our differential dx. <clears throat> Now, both of these radii that I'm seeing, these are both changes in y. That is, they are vertical distances. So the real question here is, which y's are we seeing the change in? Now, for the big radius, we have the line, which is y1, that's the top, minus the bottom, which is y3. And that will be our change in y for the big radius. For y1 is 2x minus y3 is negative 3. We can simplify that to be uh, 2x plus 3. The inner radius is once again going to be a change in y, so top function minus bottom function. Top function here is going to be y2, and the bottom function way down here is going to be y3. That'll be x squared minus negative 3. Both of those can be simplified as we plug them into our formula over here. We're going to use the same bounds as what we used on the uh, on part A. Please feel free to rewind if you need to check that out again, but that is 0 to 2. Big radius we just said can be simplified to 2x plus 3, which we will square. And the small radius is going to be x squared plus 3, which again we are going to square. Now what takes place after this is a great deal of algebra. We can take the pi and move it outside of our integral. 2x plus 3 quantity squared is going to be 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. And x squared plus 3 quantity squared is going to be x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 9. We can then distribute that negative sign and start combining some, any like terms that we see. I'm going to try to put it in descending order, putting the highest powers first. Highest power I see is going to be x to the fourth. It has a negative in front of it, so that'll be negative x to the fourth. Next highest power I see is x squared. We have positive 4 of them here, minus 6 of them here. That'll be minus 2x squared. The only x term that I see is plus 12x. And then as far as constants are concerned, I see a 9 minus 9, so those will cancel out completely. In this form, we are now ready to integrate, and then we'll plug in our bounds. Negative x to the fourth will become negative 1 fifth x to the fifth. 2x squared will become 2 thirds x cubed. And 12x will become 6x squared, going from lower bound 0 to upper bound 2. Once again, plugging in lower bound 0 is going to give us a lot of 0, so we'll go ahead and neglect doing that. 1 fifth, 2 to the fifth, minus 2 thirds, 2 to the third, plus 6 times 2 squared. As much fun as it looks to try showing off, I think bringing in a calculator is probably going to be a responsible decision. Negative 1 fifth times 2 raised to the power of 5 minus 2 thirds times 2 to the power of 3, plus 6 times 2 squared. Bring all that together, press math enter enter to convert it into a fraction for us. That'll be 184 fifteenths times that extra coefficient of pi from in front. So final answer for this one, 184 pi over 15. Now, going into the problem, I did anticipate that this was going to be the largest volume because the region in question 
Uh, the distance from the area to the axis of rotation is without a doubt the largest in this last case. The farther something is from an axis of rotation, the broader the sweeping you're making as you're rotating about an axis. I hope you found this informative, and I'll see you for the next one.